In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating a simple technique for taking a single object and filling it with another object using Inkscape. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I'll do in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you need it. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So I'm going to open up a blank document and I'm going to grab my text tool by either grabbing it from the toolbar over here or just pressing the letter T on the keyboard. And I'm going to click on the canvas and for this demonstration I'm just going to use the letter S. I'm going to use a large capital letter S. I'm going to hold control and scale this up so that we maintain the aspect ratio. And let me open up my text editor by going to text and selecting text and font. And I'm going to change the font of this to Montserrat Black. And I'm going to use a very heavyweight font for this because it gives us more space to fill in with that object. Let me scale this up some more. I'm going to convert this to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And then I will quote unquote ungroup it by going to Object, Ungroup. Now nothing visibly changes there, but it just it's a function that's required to make this work as needed. And now I'm going to open up the Layers menu by going to layer and selecting layers and objects. And if you notice here, this text object is located on layer one. I'm gonna create a new layer on top of this where I'm gonna place the object that I would like to fill this in with. So I'm gonna click this plus icon up here and it's gonna add a new layer. And I have an object already copied to my clipboard. I'm just gonna press Control V to paste that in there. You can use any object you want to fill in your shape or letter. You can use a single object or as in my case, I'm using a grouping of objects here. So I have this orange slice that I created. I'm just gonna fill it in with this. Let me scale this down a little bit. And I wanna center this, I wanna put this in the top left corner of this object. But first, let me take this object and make note of the size. If I come up here to the, the settings where it says W and H for width and height, you can see the size. I'm gonna size this at 500 pixels wide and then it's gonna to go to about 580 pixels high. So I'm gonna make a mental note of this width and height. For my instance here, I'm gonna use 500 by 600. I'm just gonna round up to make it easier. I'm gonna click on this object, hold shift, click on this object, and I wanna align those two together. So let me come up here to object and go to align and distribute. And let me choose last selected, and I'm going to align the left edges and the top edges so that it places the object in the top left corner of this object's bounding box. And now I can click off of it to select every, to deselect everything. So let me just come over here to my layers menu and make sure I have everything as I need it. This object here is in layer two and this object is layer one. Everything looks good there. Now I'm going to use the tiled clones feature to generate copies of this image inside or this graphic inside of this letter. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to edit, clone and choose create tiled clones. And the settings I'm going to use for this, I'm first gonna come over here to scale and I wanna make sure I have the randomized column set to 50% for both the X and the Y axis. Make sure you have zeros in here. It should be by default, but if not, just make sure to enter zeros. And then I'll come over here to the rotation. We wanna rotate this object as well. We don't want it to just be the same rotation all the way through. We want randomized rotation. So I set the randomized to 100%. I'm gonna leave these two at zero. And blur and opacity, I'll leave that empty. Color, I'll leave that empty. And then I'll come over here to trace. You wanna enable this option right here that says trace the drawing under the clone slash braid items. And we're gonna choose the opacity setting and then only the presence setting. Make sure you deselect these other settings here. And now when we choose between rows and columns or width and height, we're gonna choose width and height and we're gonna enter that width and height of this object that you made note of earlier. So for my example here, I was doing this earlier, so these numbers are already there. It's 500 by 600. So now with that in place, I'm gonna click the create button and it should generate copies of that object within the other object. Now, if you notice, th the copies are kind of large. I didn't really like how that came out. So I'm gonna press Command Z or Control Z to undo that. And I'm gonna make this object a little smaller and try that again. I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. Let me zoom back out and click the create button again and see how that goes. Okay, that looks a little better, but still a little large. Let me undo that again. And I'll make this a little bit smaller. And this should do the trick this time. Let me try it one more time. Okay, that looks a lot better. So now that that's in place, 
Let me zoom in on this a little bit. Let me close out of the tiled clones menu. We don't need that anymore. If you notice, the objects are overlapping each other, which doesn't really create a good effect. We want them to be not overlapping. So to correct that, I'm gonna hold Control and Shift and take this original object and scale it down a little bit. And if you notice, when I do that, all of the other objects scale down as well because these are all linked clones. So whatever I do to this original object, it will also happen to these other objects. So scaling it up and down will help increase and decrease the density of the objects within the shape. And that right there looks like a good happy medium. I'm gonna move this out of the way. If you notice, we have some imperfections in here. A lot of these objects went outside of the shape. That's okay, we can just go through and click on them and press delete one by one to get rid of them. So I'm just gonna go through here and delete these real quick. And another thing you'll probably want to do, let me just get rid of that one as well. Another thing you'll want to do is go and move these around a little bit just to correct the spacing. And we're just, we're just gonna do this manually. We're gonna go through these one by one. Let me come up here to the top of the layers menu. I'm gonna collapse layer two so I can see layer one. And I wanna lock layer one so that I don't accidentally move the layer or the object in the layer with what I'm about to do. Because what I'm, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna manually move these objects around so that they are sitting on the edge of the shape or the letter. And you may have to just manually adjust these so that they are uh, evenly spaced out and they don't overlap each other or they don't look like there's big gaps between them. So I'm just gonna balance these out a little bit. And again, this is something we're gonna do manually. You can hold control and scale it up and down. And if you wanna make additional copies, you could just click and drag it and then press the space bar and then it'll make copies of it. So you can just make copies in there like that by pressing your space bar. And I'll move these around a little bit as well. And I think you get the idea. So let me just go through here real quick and just straighten this out so that it looks good. And then I will catch up with you when I'm finished. All right, so for the most part, I've finished up here. There's a few loose ends that need to be tied up. This one looks a little big and there's some empty gaps in there, but you should get the idea by now. The really important thing when doing this is to make sure that you have these objects as close to the edge of the larger object as possible, because that's what's really gonna help it maintain its appearance as the original shape. If they get too far from the edge, it's gonna kind of lose its appearance. So that's really important. And once you're done doing all of this, these objects should still be linked together. So you can still increase or decrease the size of these clones if you want to using the original, but I think it looks good as it was. So I'll just put that back. And now that that's done, let me come back up here to my top, the top of my layers menu. I'm gonna collapse layer two where all, those, all of those clones are. And I'll come over here to layer one and I'm just gonna turn off the visibility of it and you can see the effect now. I've taken this object and filled in the other object with copies of it. And maybe I'll even make this a little bigger. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like how that looks right there. And uh, yeah, I think that should do it for this tutorial. So that's how you can use the tiled clones feature in Inkscape to fill in an object with another object. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.